Well, bravo Kung Fu Panda! You have become the second animated film series to have a great trilogy. The first one being Toy Story, but man, this was really good. It's lazy time. Everybody, I'm LaserDude99. Don't mind the background. I'm just trying this out. I'm working with some effects. This might not be the way I continue to do things going forward, but I'm just testing things out. So, uh, so this is my review of Kung Fu Panda 3, whew, starring Jack Black, Angelina Jolie, Dustin Hoffman, J.K. Simmons, Seth Rogen. Uh, who am I? Jackie, Jackie Chan, Lucy Liu, boy, they just cram everybody into this franchise, don't they? And uh, basically, this is the third and, I'm guessing, final installment. Don't quote me on that. There might be more. Uh, seems to be doing well, because this is a very good movie. First thing I want to say that this movie is, it's in an interesting place, because I saw the first Kung Fu Panda movie. I wasn't expecting a whole lot. And I saw it and I thought it was very good. It was solid. The characters were likable, surprisingly, since I'm not a really big fan of Jack Black at all. And yet, I still found out that I found his character likable. I found Poe very entertaining. And then, so I went into the second one with, you know, some more higher expectations. And boy, did it fulfill them. I really like Kung Fu Panda 2. I'm not sure if it would place, like, in my top 10 list of animated movies, but, you know what, top 20, maybe. So I was actually look really looking forward to this one. I was really psyched for it. I didn't know where they were going to go with this story, because I knew that after the end of the second one, we were going to go into... Poe finding his father and what that was like and what is that going to be like. And it's in a very interesting situation. So what's the basic story? We got this guy named Kai. I guess I can't really call him. But, you know, he's a, he's a wildebeest, I think so. And uh, he was an old friend of Ugwe, the turtle, who uh, faded into uh, peach leaves in the first one. And he uh, is, was trapped in the spirit world. But now he's finally got all the cheese of Kung Fu Masters, enough to allow him to break free from the spirit world and go into the mortal world. And he is absolutely hateful of Ugwe and wants to destroy everything that Ugwe ever stood for and decides to take his revenge on everything, which includes Po being the dragon warrior who Ugwe believes can stop him and all of the pandas for reasons that I won't want to get into. And so, through this movie, we got Poe trying to learn the essence of chi. Chi, uh, now, I don't know a whole lot about chi, but I know a little bit. Um, so, chi is basically the essence of oneself in being able to channel yourself and your chi into energy. This Kai guy is using it to absorb other people and take control of them until they turn into this, like, jade zombies. Zombies! Anyway, and he's trying to take all of it down. And in the meantime, Poe meets his real birth father, and they he says that he can actually find a way to teach him this chi. Which, of course, doesn't make his noodles father, Mr. Ping, noodles very happy because now he's afraid that he's going to lose Poe for good. And so the movie is Poe trying to learn how to do this chi thing while also trying to find out how to be a panda and basically finding out who he is. What is he as a person? Who is he? Which I kind of thought that was the message of the first one, but I guess in this one they're being more metaphorical. Where the first one he was searching for his past and what that made him, this one he's more looking for who he is as a person, or as a panda. So let's go for the plus sides. Uh, I really like this movie because it, the humor is on point. They go really, they, they, they might repeat one joke or a couple of jokes a little bit too much, but for the most part the humor is really on point all the time. 
I also really like all these other pandas. You know, I was I was thinking that um I'm probably just they're all gonna look alike to me. Oh, that sounded panda racist. Uh, but uh, they, I you know that's what I kind of thought. They were all gonna look alike, and I wouldn't get any individual characters. And we do. We definitely get some different characters with the pandas. When someone does something, you're like, oh no, that's that panda. And when somebody else does something, you're like, oh, that's that panda. And so you really get a, a quick characterization. Like you don't know any of their deep inner meanings besides uh, Poe's father. But, you know, I really like how Poe... Poe, I always... I, like, I didn't know what to make of him the first time I saw the first Kung Fu Panda. I liked him more the other times, after, especially after I seen the second one, because Poe, for me, is like... For example, when you see a Kung Fu movie, and a Kung Fu master does an amazingly cool move, and you're like, holy crap, that was a cool move. The Kung Fu Master doesn't realize he just did a cool move. He did a move that was a strategic move in order to win the battle. He doesn't really know he's doing anything awesome. He just knows that this is the move to take down his opponent. Where Poe always real felt to me like he was the fanboy that became the Kung Fu fighter. But he's since he's still the fanboy, he knows that the stuff that he's doing is absolutely amazing. It's like in the last film when uh, they have that moment where all the Kung Fu Masters are going through the air in slow motion, they're all looking intense. You know, that's a cool moment. Poe has to look back and forth and be like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And it's like, Poe's that character who he can recognize when stuff like that is happening. I, I will say, though, that, you know, okay, let's talk about the villain, this Kai guy. Kai is pretty good. He's voiced by J.K. Simmons. I want Spider-Man! Yeah, Spider-Man, yeah. He's a lot of fun. I like villains who can bring some humor as well as the menace, and he definitely has that down. Out of the three villains of the Kung Fu Panda series, I'd say that he's better than the one in the first one, who I can't remember his name, which is a good sign. But I wouldn't say he's better than Lord Shen in the second one. I think, But I think mostly the reason is Lord Shen had some uh, more of a weight to his character as a villain because he had more of a, a threatening and you felt like he could accomplish the goals that he wanted to set out. We're here that, you know, it was a revenge plot. Revenge plots are good and all, but, you know, it's just like that was the guy from the first one. That was his thing, too. I'm just saying we've seen revenge plots before. I like when a, a villain has a grander scheme beyond just the hero. You know, I didn't really know exactly what this guy's plan was except for ruling the world, but that was pretty vague and all, all of its own. But J.K. Simmons does a good job. He does bring the menace when it needs to be, but he does bring the humor when he needs to. This, the design is actually pretty cool. You know, I like this, like, they're going for... Uh, is he a wildebeest? That's not exactly, you know, the, the type of animal you would go... You know, like, for the first movie, that uh, white, you know, leopard, snow leopard thing, you're like... Yeah, that's pretty much looks like a villain. The peacock was a different design. I don't want to get too much comparing to the whole trilogy. This is a review on the third one, but I like this guy's design. I like his uh, voice acting. I like him as a character. He's menacing, um, but he can also have some funny moments. I like that all around. I think that one of my my things that I'm, I'm not sure if. It's going to take a couple of viewings for me to know how I feel. Like, I'm pretty sure I know exactly how I feel in comparison to all these three movies. I still think the second one's the best, then this one, then the first one. I think that this one, the only thing that I can really say is, like, Poe has to, you know, he, he has to learn chi, and his father says in order to learn chi, you got to learn how to be a panda. So he has to go and do all these panda things. And they're all humorous scenes. It's just my thing, I'm like, dude, this Kai guy is destroying all this other stuff while he Poe's just rolling around having fun. And I'm, you know, my mind's like, oh, I don't know if, you know, it's like Poe's having a vacation and other people are suffering and getting hurt. And like, I'm not sure if I like that. But on the other hand, he's only doing these things because he's trying to master Chi. Cause, so it's not like he's slacking off. He's trying. He's trying it as hard as he can. There's a scene where his father tells him to sleep in and he's like, yes, sir. And he, and he goes over and he like straightens out his bed and he goes, oh, you gotta make sacrifices. And you know, it's like, he, he's trying his hardest to be so lazy, which is really an interesting uh, twist on it. For my complaints of this film, I don't really have a whole lot. The, some, the side characters are still not really developed. You know, like the, the, the problems I have with this are still the problems I've had with the whole series. You know, like, all, all the rest of the Furious Five, with the exception of Tigris, is not really that developed. 
they might have given Monkey more lines in this one, but they probably gave Lucy Liu character the snake less. I think that they could have developed a little bit more of the side character. That still seems to be this series' greatest weakness, is it doesn't really know how to develop its side characters, and oh well, that's, that's just the way it is. Besides that, I really don't have a whole lot of problems with. I do wish, though, that they, you know, they talk about what happened to Poe's mother and everything. I do wish Poe brought up that you guys don't need to hide anymore. I've, I, you know, I, I dealt with the person who was hunting pandas. You know, he's not around anymore. He doesn't need to hunt you. You know, they're still hiding in the mountains, and I'm thinking, well, I don't know. Do, do they, uh, do, do they, are they still hiding at the end of this? I guess not. But, you know, I w really wish they, like, they, they said that, you know, the Poe would really just put his father's mind at ease. There are some scenes that I think drag on a little bit too long. There's this one scene in the beginning while having a, a lot of humorous moments. It has a lot of, you know, it's just like, I'm like, okay, I get the joke, just wrap it up, please. Because we know what's going to happen, just, you know, let's get, us, let's get us there. In the end, Kung Fu Panda 3 is very fun, it's very energetic, kids will love it, and you know what, it still is in this mode where it's respectful to the culture, it still is exceedingly entertaining, the fight scenes are fun, and you know what, it's, it's not afraid to maybe darken it up at times when the story needs it. It's a very good movie, and as I said in the beginning, I think this makes Kung Fu Panda 2, the second animated movie series, to have all good trilogy, all, all good movies in its trilogy. You might say a few, but as far as my concern and what I've viewed, and I'm talking about movies that have been to theaters, you know, like, for example, Aladdin has three movies, but only one of them was in theaters. So, you know, that doesn't really count. Besides, most straight-to-DVD movies suck anyway. So, yeah, Kung Fu Panda, thumbs up all the way. I think it's a very solid movie. It's not, like, overly special, because I, the movie still basically went more or less where I thought it was going to go. But it was still fun on the journey to get there. I would say it's a very good movie. So, I'm giving Kung Fu Panda 3 a... 7 out of 10. Good movie, very entertaining, bring the kids, bring your brother and sister, whatever. If you've seen the other movies and you like them, then I think that you're going to enjoy this one. If you don't like the other movies, let's say if you watch some of the other Kung Fu Panda, you're like, eh, not a fan, just doesn't speak to me, then I'm not going to say that this is a must-see, that you, that this gonna, it's going to turn you or something. If you haven't been turned yet, you're not going to be... And I just feel like, overall, it's still a very entertaining flick. So thanks for watching, everybody. Remember, I'm LazyDude99, and uh, yeah, see you later. Bye. Be sure to check out more of my other videos on my channel, and wait for more coming soon.